1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 12. Now we see but a poor reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part. Then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. This text has been occupying my attention for the last few days, looking in a mirror dimly, looking in a mirror that is blurred, not understanding, and then clarity finally as we grow. I have been pondering why this text has been on my heart and my spirit. And each day as I ponder that, I could imagine different pieces. I could imagine why that it seems to apply to the world around us. What's going on right now as we are trying to say, what does the future hold? Where is things going? What will life be like? When will it return to what we anticipate and what we understand and what we experience, what we feel is normal? But for the moment, it seems obscured and blurred, and we do not know what that is. This text itself is most commonly associated with weddings, and usually often, or at least often, I have found a, a request as one of those texts to read, speaking of love and how important love is. But this little piece of it, this looking in the mirror and seeing dimly, and growing through that and understanding things is a passage about spiritual growth and growing in our understanding of God and our understanding of priorities and what's important from what isn't and, and certainly how important love is. But that's part of growing in our faith. I was struggling with why this came to mind because the texts of the week and the text of the season are those resurrection texts, this Easter season and the visitation by Jesus to the new apostles in the upper room, and those that saw him risen. And I got thinking, why is this text occupying my mind and my heart? As much as it seems to apply to the times, it didn't apply to the season. And then I came to a different conclusion this afternoon. I finally understood it. Maybe that's just giving it time to work, giving it time to mature as a thought, and as a prayer, and as a wonder that this really is an Easter text, not one of which we are most accustomed, but it's an Easter text nonetheless. Those original disciples did not understand. They could not see clearly. They had heard Jesus for years speak of his prophecies and his plan and what it was and what it would mean and that he would go to Jerusalem and he would die and he would be raised again. They did not understand. They saw only dimly. And then after the resurrection, after they saw him in that upper room, they started, that mirror started to clear. They started to see and understand more clearly Jesus' actual plan and the power and the grace and the love that was found in the resurrection and in the death of Christ. They moved, they grew in faith. They grew in their discipleship. And in that path, they were able to become stronger and it took time, but they were able to grow in faith that, that they then decided and, and became committed to following that great commission to share the gospel throughout the world. But it was a path of growth. It was a path of change. It was a path of not being able to see and being confused. And then the path became clear. And I see that as a parallel in a way. We are right now in a situation where the mirror is cloudy. We cannot see the future because it is a question of future and understanding and what will life be like when we can gather together again? What will life be like when we can worship together again? Will it be the same? Do we go back to just as we were? Or will our worship in some ways be different? Will our life as disciples be different? Will our priority as disciples and as a congregation, as a community of faith, will that be different? Will some different things be important to us in new ways? How can we communicate and connect with the world around us in new ways? Things such as with the technology that we're using, the importance of connecting with people that we don't normally see, not once simply waiting for Sunday mornings to see them once again, but 
the talking and communicating and calling and sharing? What new patterns grow and arise? What new paths do we walk? How do we grow? How do we take this time that God has given us? Explore with it. And then as we come out of it, try to say, Lord, lead us into new paths. Help this path become clearer to us. Help the mirror go from being dim to one that is bright. Help us see the path that you have for us and the future that is before us, the dream that you have for us. I invite you to ponder that. What will life be like? And how does God call us to be different as we proceed through and out of this time? Grace and peace of the Lord be with you. Amen.